Well, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, it's good to see you. Every single one that um, comes because you know this is an important part of you growing into knowing the Lord. These words are measured from inside and they ring true inside of you. <clears throat> I was, um, um, after I woke up today, I was thinking about dreams. And no, I'm, I'm not going to talk about dreams today. But there was um, a question, um, I think it came from the Lord. Do you, did you ever think what kind of dreams our Lord Jesus was dreaming when he was on earth? You know, before that um, ministry start, maybe as a kid, and during those three, three and a half years when he was doing ministry, we know that he was going the night to pray. And, but at the same time, I know his uh, body needed rest. And uh, dreams are a very interesting realm. <laughs> and I know it was under the control of the Spirit for him. <clears throat> So um, I was uh, I, I was thinking uh, more because uh, maybe in the last uh, ten fifteen years the Lord started to change and um, had me remember things that were important pertinent so we can go into it and he had to be cleaned was cleansed and if he had some value in it there were some seeds planted if there was uh, the word there was wisdom understanding coming and speaking into the dreams then i would write them down those uh, words and uh, images and meditate on that my my desire was that those uh, six, seven, eight hours will not be just for my body, but they will be, it's a third of the day, a preparation, a continuous preparation for um, what he was doing during the awake time. <clears throat> That's about an, an, an dreams. So, um, back to the fruit because that's uh, that's something that um we continued with again i'm i'm trying not to use the word fruits of the spirit that's not what uh, the the bible says at the same time these um aspects <clears throat> Again, like faces of of a diamond. It's just one diamond. It's it's Christ, the fruit of the Spirit. It's a person. It's Him in you. <laughs> and then it's love. <laughs> Maybe each of these uh, uh, facets um, they have a different type of shining colors. What about colors? You know. Um, yeah, rainbow has seven colors, but um, maybe there are more. <laughs> so the, the way the way he presents to us, it's him through love. He is the perfect love. He it's him through peace and joy. And um, that place that I mentioned in Second Peter, <clears throat> one eight. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be uh, barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are after Him. He is the fruit. He is everything. He is our life. And uh, yes, we want to abound, abound in this fruitfulness. 
Therefore, brethren, verse 10, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. <clears throat> for an so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So it's, it's important, you know, I come from, um, when, when I used to listen to religious preaching sermons, um, and also there's some background that some people that I really listened to and it was um, somehow taught and preached that here on earth um, we're always going to lack or miss things and it cannot be perfect in the flesh which is such a wise thing because it's, that's not the perfection from outside in. <clears throat> right and that's that's so important because some people really pay so much attention on outside in our self-awareness is of the body of the mind of the soul instead of letting from inside out the perfection of him to come through um, so that was a wise statement not perfection in the flesh we don't judge according to the outside. At the same time, was living room for, well, I, you know, everybody has his own little addiction, little thing, little going, and that thing, and that's okay. And you know, we cannot be perfected here. And um, that part of that statement, um, it's. It's not getting me to judge people. I'm, I'm okay, everybody <laughs> that has the Lord, it's before the Lord. It's you deal with Him. <laughs> Don't judge somebody else's servant, right? That's what it says in the Word. But for me, that was not good enough because it's almost like I'm diminishing. Um, I'm putting some, well, the cross, well, the death of Christ, well, the resurrection of Christ could not do that much. Because, you know, people in religion, <coughs> excuse me, people, you know, that I know, and <clears throat> that man of God, and, you know, they were all, you know, with some lacks and problems and... So it, it bothered me because I'm I'm looking at the perfect Jesus and the perfect Holy Spirit and the glory and the work that the Father prepared for us. It's infinite. So I cannot just tap a little bit into it and say, well, you know what? It's uh, we we're humans. This is it. That's that's how we can be. That's how far we can go. Everybody's limited. I couldn't settle with that. And this is some of the word that really got me to keep growing and seeking him and say, no, this, there's some roots. If I keep falling into that or that thing keep pulling me in, there's some roots, there's some seeds. They don't belong in the soul of the Son of God. I don't want it. That fear of man has no place in there. I want Jesus. <laughs> he is the perfect fruit. So that's where I'm coming from. Not judging things and people that do or don't do. But from the per perfectness, uh, the, the powerful, uh, the Lord that's inside me. That's what I'm looking at. That's my model. Okay? Prototype. And we, we talked about the fruit of the Spirit because we said that we are walking led by the Spirit, but who we are in the Spirit, it's coming from inside out, from this fruit, which is Him. Right? So the, the way to walk naturally in the supernatural 
new nature, divine nature, is to have this fruit grown, ripe inside us. <clears throat> it's not to kind of look at a set of instructions that says, okay, I'm going to try to do this, I'm going to try to, oh, I'm going to try to do this. Even if lots of times uh, the Lord sends us to some instructions of wisdom and understanding and counsel, there's lots of word about that. Yeah. Do this, don't do that. So He sends us to that. But I know that all of it, the big picture, is He is growing inside us to the place that we are one with that goodness. We are like He is. We are good as He is. I'm not trying to be good. I am. <laughs> okay? So this is the change from inside out that the fruit of the Lord it's bringing inside us. So we are focusing more on the fruit and not on um, the power to do, even if that's part of the growing of the fruit, right? The watering, um, the speaking increase and all, all of this, okay? The garden of our soul has the fruit. <laughs> the fruit, yeah, the, it comes to mind that the tree of life, we, we're we told about the tree of life in the garden. And then in the book of Revelation, they said that there were lots of trees, trees of life. <clears throat> or actually says the tree of life was on each side of the river. Right? So it's one, it's more. Um, yeah, <laughs> he is one, right? So uh, Galatians 5.22, which is our uh, the base that we uh, start from, it's fruit of the Spirit, and today we talk about long-suffering. Um, <clears throat> I couldn't find that verse, but um, I think I heard Michael saying that there is a place where he says that long-suffering is the only fruit that's changing into glory. The long suffering of the Lord is changing into glory. Love is changing into more love and peace, more peace, and all, all those. The long suffering is changing into glory. So I, I, I love that. Um, but we'll, we'll go with that while it's working <laughs> inside us. Uh, it is one of the dearest. Um, to my heart and probably one that I had to learn in the hardest circumstances. We'll go to that. So the word is macrotemia. Macro, you kind of understand that, right? And it's translated as patience, endurance, constancy, steadfastness, perseverance, or long-suffering, uh, slowness in avenging wrongs. This is, this is the key right there. It's slow to anger. That's in, in the Old Testament is translated that word in long suffering several times. The Lord is slow to anger, slow to avenging wrongs. A few verses, Romans 2 4. Um, or do you despise the riches of his goodness, the forbearance and long suffering? Different things, forbearance. Right? It's the capacity of carrying a load for a long time. Man, I've been dealing with this for years. That's forbearance. Long suffering is it's different. It's the way that when you have the right to do it, you don't do it. You delay 
the anger, you delay the revenge, or you don't do it at all. Even if you could do it, okay, long suffering. And knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. In Ephesians 4 2 and a few other places, I didn't pull them all, uh, talks about our relationships to one another with all lowliness and gentleness. Yes, we'll talk about gentleness too. With long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Long suffering is essential in relationships. And I'm not saying you have to get it. He, he is inside you. Maybe, maybe you didn't know how to water that. You didn't even understand that those circumstances were blessing, helping the long-suffering part of the fruit to grow inside you. So now you see it. Um, 1 Timothy 1.16, I love this. However, for this reason I obtain mercy that in me, <laughs> that's Apostle Paul talking, uh, sounds like me talking too, in me first, Jesus Christ, my show all long suffering <laughs> as a parent to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. I'm becoming that pattern for others when I can bring the testimony of how his long suffering dealt with me all this time. So a little definition, um, a quick one, the patience is to continue to do and steadily walk toward the goal. You continue in that no matter what happens on the outside. The endurance, it's the measure of resistance against constant antagonism. That's the resistance. Resistance to um, bending, right? It's like something that throws you into this and somebody throws you extremely opposite. It's almost like tries to break you, right? And the Lord says, no, 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 you are, you have endurance. You are not breaking. You are bringing together. <laughs> okay. Patience, endurance. But long, long suffering is slow in avenging wrongs. Not do what you are entitled and empowered to do. But you choose not to do, you can, you are able not to do that because of love and because that you are long suffering. There is something powerful, so again, I know that um, it, it transforms, but the long suffering, I found the word in the scripture that has to do with strength, might, and salvation. Okay. Well, every other aspect is so powerful, peace, um, so important as it works inside you. Long suffering has a special ministry in us. And if it was not not seen not not perceived in your soul this is the message that's gonna bring it up okay second peter 3 15 and consider listen to this that the long suffering of our lord is salvation do you know those people you are praying for their salvation and you think you have to take a stand and tell them what's wrong, what's good, and direct them. And, and there is time for that too. But what is salvation for them is the long-suffering working inside you. The long-suffering of the Lord, the, that part of the fruit, is, is changing 
saving, changing more things in people around you than you'll ever know, than your words will. Okay, long suffering. And here is the connection with might. Proverbs 16.32, we mentioned this verse before, but there's so much depth in this verse. He who is slow to anger, I would say he who knows long suffering, is better than the mighty. <laughs> and he who rules his spirit, his soul, is better than he who takes a city. Long suffering rules the soul. Long suffering, slow to anger. It's better than the mighty. And some of you say, well, that's kind of like, you know, short fuse, that's kind of how I am, and then I quiet down and I'm such a nice person. And it, it, it's this is not about how the quality or the psychological assessment, right? Because this is not according to the old man. Hey, this is according to Jesus. We are all like him, as introvert, extrovert, <laughs> powerful, mighty, as he is. That's how we are. Okay? It's a new creation we're talking about. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say this in closing about um, long suffering and experience that I mentioned before when I talked about David. But it, it definitely fits here. David and Nabal, if you remember, that guy was a rich guy. Abigail was his wife. And uh, David um, had some, I don't know, 400 people or something with him. They were in the wilderness. They were helping Nabal's um, shepherds to protect them against the enemies. So protecting their sheep and because David had valiant warriors with him. So then they, they were starving. They didn't have, um, you know, what to drink, what to eat. And they, they sent a message to Nabal and said, hey, do um, you have any food? Because look, we, we are helping you too. And Nabal really um, stingy kind of in an ugly way it's like nah I'm, I'm not gonna do that so um david said okay we'll come and get it rightfully so um really filled with anger and prepared all his men nabal and his servants had no chance so they were gonna go and just get everything um now, the Lord was working on David's <laughs> heart because <laughs> he was going to be king and he had to deal with lots of people that were doing wrong to him. And uh, some of them, the Lord would say, like Shimea, no, no, you know, you cannot kill him. <laughs> you cannot take revenge on him, right? So the Lord was preparing David's soul in the wilderness. So um, Abigail comes, uh, hears about, she hears about this and comes to David in 1 Samuel 25, 26. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, since the Lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed and, listen, from avenging yourself with your own hand, now then, let your enemies and those who seek harm for my Lord be as Nabal. Okay, so Nabal ends up to die uh, that night or something. Um, nothing that David did. But Ab Abigail, the wife, comes and stops David from going. And she said, the Lord stopped you from avenging yourself with your own hand very powerful long suffering avenging not avenging yourself with your own hand then david said to abigail 
Blessed is the Lord God of Israel who sent you this day to meet me. And blessed is your advice. And blessed are you. Because, listen, you have kept me this day from coming to bloodshed and from avenging myself with my own hand. For indeed, as the Lord God of Israel lives, who has kept me back from hurting you, unless you had hurried and come to meet me, surely by morning light no males would have been left to Nabal. See, there are, there are situations where um, the right thing to do is so obvious in any culture, in any understanding, this is it. You know? And um, the anger, which is rightfully so, rising up in your soul, it's coming to do something that's right. This is, just, just look at your Father and look at our Lord Jesus. The long suffering of the Lord is salvation for us. We would have had no chance, absolutely, while we were enemies. He was right to destroy everything. But the long suffering came up. And he let that wrath come on the cross. This is so powerful because it's part of building inside us the long suffering of the Lord. And remember that is greater than the mighty. You are who you are. You stand strong not because all the weapons and who you know and how you know and how you can use all that. There is a time for that too. But you stay strong because you know who you are. And long suffering it's the beautiful awesome strength from the Lord in your heart. We're so blessed.